Orion is the shiny new toy in the AI world, but don't be fooled by the hype. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Turns out OpenAI had to scramble and revamp their whole game plan because of a massive roadblock with Orion. Those GPT upgrades just aren't coming as fast anymore. So, what's the deal with this Orion thing anyway? Why all the fuss? And why is OpenAI having such a tough time getting it off the ground? We'll break it all down for you, so don't go anywhere. OpenAI Orion. An introduction. The release of GPT-3 and then GPT-4 has undoubtedly set OpenAI as a leader in AI and natural language processing, or NLP. Since GPT-4, we've gotten GPT-4.0 and even the O1 model, but if there's one thing that everyone is waiting for, it's the next frontier model, GPT-5. But we might never get GPT-5, because it's rumored that it might be dubbed as Orion instead. And this new Orion model is described as potentially up to 100 times more powerful than GPT-4 which means the OpenAI is taking the capabilities of their previous models and reaching whole new heights. So what are the new features we can expect from Orion? Well, the first is obviously its performance boost. According to reports, Orion will make use of more advanced architecture and training techniques than ever before, which means its ability to understand and generate text will be more accurate than any of the previous models. This means we'll get a high level of comprehension and more contextually relevant responses. Other than that, it's reported that Orion has a much broader application scope. That means with the new Orion model, we're not just getting better conversational abilities, but now this model is going to have a much wider range of applications for many different industries, including healthcare, finance, education, and even entertainment. If all this does come true with Orion, AI won't just be a conversational helper. Now it will be a doctor, a financial advisor, a teacher, and much, much more. Last but not the least, it is also believed that Orion may have improved multimodal capabilities, which means we may be able to enter text, images, audio, or even video inputs. If this does come true, interactions with AI will become much more useful than ever before. Launch expectations. Hearing all these cool features, I'm sure you want to know when exactly this model might get launched. Well, you're not alone. The community has been speculating since September. It all started when Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, tweeted this. Knowing Sam Altman, all of his random tweets are somehow a cryptic message, so people started wondering what it meant. And a user even went on ChatGPT01 model and asked it to look for the message. And it turned out the hidden message was none other than Orion. From there, everyone started thinking this model may be released in December, considering the winter constellations. But Sam Altman quickly ended these rumors when he replied to a tweet in October and said this was fake news. Now, some people are speculating that this model may be released within early next year, but let's not get too hopeful because we might still be facing major delays considering the bottleneck the OpenAI team seems to be stuck in. Underwhelming updates. OpenAI Orion has gone through an initial employee testing and the results were not what the team had hoped for. With Orion, OpenAI had a lot of ambitions. It was expected to mark a major milestone. You know how ChatGPT had a major update from GPT-3 to GPT-4? They were aiming for a performance gain that huge. However, after finishing an initial round of using and testing, some OpenAI employees revealed that Orion hasn't exactly met these expectations. Initial testing did indicate that Orion achieved GPT-4 level performance after completing only 20% of its training. I know this may sound impressive to some of you, but the important point to note here is that the early stages of AI training are what produce the most dramatic improvements. And this doesn't prove that the remaining 80% of training will produce any significant advancements or surpass GPT-4 by a massive margin. In fact, OpenAI employees claim that the improvement from GPT-4 to Orion is not nearly as big as that from GPT-3 to GPT-4 was. And in terms of quality, the jump from GPT-4 to Orion is only moderate at best. To make matters worse, researchers at OpenAI also believe that Orion is actually not better or more reliable in certain tasks as compared to GPT-4. It has been revealed that Orion is not better than its predecessor in terms of coding, and the only sure improvement has been seen in language tasks. This of course raised some eyebrows in the industry. I mean, the leader in AI releases a new model, and it's not notably better than a model that was introduced more than 20 months ago? That's pretty unsettling. To add to that, Orion is also posing challenges on the operational front for OpenAI, as it is expected to require way more resources than previous models to not only run in data centers, but also for maintenance. But why exactly is OpenAI struggling to achieve the same performance gain? What exactly is the problem here? And does this mean LLMs are on their way to reach stagnation? AI scaling law. There is a fundamental principle when it comes to generative AI, the scaling law, which all the industry leaders firmly believe, or rather believed. Since the release of ChatGPT two years ago, AI companies have maintained the opinion that by simply adding more training data and computing power, AI models can always be scaled up to make them smarter and more capable. 
But if we look at the struggles OpenAI is facing with Orion, this belief is seriously challenged. This principle may be reaching its limitations, and the cause is simple, the available data. Earlier this year, research revealed that AI companies will exhaust publicly available data by the year 2028, after which training data stock has chances of becoming obsolete. Even other than this research, some prominent AI scientists have also started speaking out on the limitations of the bigger is better philosophy or the scaling law. Ilya Sutskever, who is the founder of AI Law's Safe Superintelligence and co-founder of OpenAI, that the results from scaling up pre-training have plateaued, considering the data used to understand language patterns and structures has become exhausted. He further said that the age of scaling may be over, and now we're back in the age of wonder and discovery. Don't be mistaken. Sutskever is actually known for achieve massive leaps in generative AI by the process of scaling up, which is actually what led to GPT-4. But now, his words are proving to be true considering OpenAI has hit a wall when it comes to the data that is available to train its AI for Orion. The available supply of high-quality text and other data that LLMs can work with in pre-release training is continuously decreasing, which makes it difficult for new LLMs to have better powers when it comes to solving complex problems, including the coding problems. This explains why Orion hasn't gotten much better at coding than GPT-4. At this point, LLMs have used up so much of the data that finding good quality training data is becoming more difficult than ever before, which means the advancement is significantly slowed down and it's much more difficult to achieve the same leap now than it was back in 2022. Other technical limitations. But exhaustion of publicly available data isn't the only technical limitation that OpenAI or other AI companies are facing in the development of a model better than GPT-4. Let's say they do magically find a lot more data to train on. Even hypothetically speaking, this training will become way more intensive in terms of computing resources, which means that developing and running Orion or further AI models will become much more expensive than ever before. Of course, it's the user that will end up tackling that bill, but it's believed that these advanced models are actually financially unfeasible to develop. I mean, these training runs can cost tens of millions of dollars as it requires the simultaneous running of hundreds of chips. More chips means a more complicated system, and a more complicated system means more likelihood of hardware-induced failure. And even with all this extensive hardware, researchers may not get to know the performance of the model until the end of the training run, which can take up to months. And imagine all that time and power that was used up just to get results that are moderate at maximum. And not to mention, imagine the impact on the environment. Imagine bigger data centers whirring and sucking power from the grids during these training runs. At a time when there is already so much concern regarding climate change, it may not be the best time for AI models to use up such intensive computing power. So with all these challenges, is Orion destined to fall short of expectations, or is this just a tiny bump on the road for OpenAI to explore even more revolutionary AI models? Well, to answer this, let's talk about how OpenAI is planning to rectify the situation. OpenAI's new strategy. To tackle this situation, OpenAI obviously had to come up with a new strategy. Starting off, they came up with a dual-track development strategy, which means they restructured their approach in a way that their model development is now divided into two separate tasks. They now have two different models, the O-series and the Orion models. The O-series are focused on reasoning capabilities and operate with a higher computational intensity, which makes them ideal for complex problem-solving tasks. On the other hand, they are working on continuing the GPT series in parallel with the Orion models, which are more focused on general language processing and communication tasks. This means both models are better at what they do while requiring less compute power than if it was one huge model. But how does that tackle the data scarcity situation? Well, for that, OpenAI is exploring something called synthetic data generation, which means instead of using real-world data, they are planning to use artificially generated data. However, this doesn't solve all their problems because with this solution comes new complications, especially regarding model quality and reliability. We already know that AI still makes mistakes from time to time. So if AI models start to be heavily trained on content that was originally AI generated, it may lead to feedback loops that end up amplifying the subtle AI imperfections, thus creating mistakes that become more and more difficult to detect and correct. Because of this reason, researchers have revealed that relying too much on synthetic data can cause AI models' performance to degrade over time. However, the OpenAI team is developing new filtering mechanisms and validation techniques to help them distinguish between high quality and potentially problematic synthetic data, thus maintaining data quality. Other than that, OpenAI is also exploring hybrid training approaches that have the potential to combine human-generated and AI-generated content, thus maximizing benefits while minimizing risks. OpenAI has actually already started doing this with their O1 model by using test time compute, which is a technique that improves the performance of AI models while it is being used. This means that the model doesn't immediately choose an answer, 
and go with it, but instead, it generates and evaluates multiple possibilities in real time, and keeping all those in consideration, it chooses the best path forward. By doing so, models can dedicate more processing power to complex math or coding problems. And even in just the O01 model, it has been revealed by a researcher at OpenAI that this technique gave it the same performance boost as if the model was scaled up by 100,000 times and trained for a 100,000 times longer. All that without all the additional computing power is actually super impressive. Researchers at other top AI labs, including Anthropic, XAI, or Google DeepMind, have also started working to develop their own version of this technique, but no one has gotten as far as OpenAI that has already released it in their O1 model and is working on improving it. That's why Chief Product Officer at OpenAI, Kevin Weil, said, by the time people do catch up, we're going to try and be three more steps ahead. Can't really argue with that one, can we? OpenAI has always been three steps ahead in the AI game. Impact on the AI landscape. Of course, as AI strategies go through a big shift, it also has the potential to completely alter the competitive landscape for AI hardware, which has been dominated by NVIDIA's AI chips till now. But with this new transition, capital investors from Sequoia to Horowitz are starting to weigh the impact it has on their expensive investments. Companies are starting to realize that with this shift, we are moving from a world of huge pre-training clusters to inference clouds, which require cloud-based servers. Till now, there has been no competition for NVIDIA's AI chips, but now, as we approach the inference market, NVIDIA might be facing more competition than before. This new approach opens up the demand for cloud infrastructure providers like Microsoft Azure or AWP. These have always been relatively smaller players when it comes to the AI market, but now it might also be a new era of AI for them instead of a solo game of NVIDIA chips. However, NVIDIA is already a step ahead and they are working on developing chips that are more suitable for inference rather than pre-training. In fact, last month, CEO Jensen Huang actually talked about how their latest AI chip, Blackwell, is doing a lot better than their other chips now that we're in a time of inference. And speaking of NVIDIA, did you know their newest AI breakthrough is already sold out until 2025? Stay tuned for our next video where we'll dive deep into why NVIDIA's innovations are flying off the shelves. Impact on OpenAI as a company? However, the impact of Orion isn't just on other companies, but also on OpenAI itself. As you may know, OpenAI is currently going through a time of major transformation. They recently secured a funding of $6.6 .6 billion from many companies, some prominent ones being Thrive Capital, Microsoft, SoftBank, and NVIDIA, among others. Apple initially explored investing too, but ultimately opted out. However, this funding deal includes a provision that allows investors to retract any of their funds if OpenAI doesn't transition to a fully for-profit entity. This implication has given rise to major internal rifts and key people, including CTO Mira Marathi and Chief Research Officer Bob McGrew, have announced their departure from the company. The goal of OpenAI has always been research-driven and to make AI available for the public benefit, but now their goals might be shifting into a more commercial light. But if this is true, the launch of Orion couldn't come at a better time for them. For one, the fact that Microsoft is investing in OpenAI is a great sign for them considering they need cloud providers right now. Their collaboration with Microsoft has the potential to provide them an integration with Azure Cloud, thus strengthening their new Orion model. And secondly, of course, if this model does achieve its potential, the commercial status of OpenAI has the potential to grow significantly, considering the massive applications it has. Great timing for this fund, isn't it? As beneficial as it sounds for OpenAI as a company, the same can't be said for its clients, though. If OpenAI does complete its transition to a for-profit organization, it is obviously going to drastically affect their pricing and accessibility, which means smaller organizations may be limited from adopting Orion. The older models will probably have the same pricing model, but if Orion is more focused on profit, we can expect a way higher pricing model. Potential applications. The potential applications of Orion are the huge than any LLM on the market right now. With these strategies, the new model is expected to have human thinking and creativity. This means GPT won't just be an AI tool anymore, but a personal assistant that understands you and responds like a human. Companies could potentially use Orion to optimize their decision-making and productivity and maybe even drive product development. A nurse, an intern, a project manager. Orion could have the potential to perform all their tasks and much more. Thus, it could potentially transform many industries, including healthcare and finance. Imagine an AI-powered Orion that analyzes patient data and history alongside global medical research data in real time to diagnose rare diseases. Imagine how cool that would be. On the other hand, in finance, 
Orion could also potentially serve as a predictive tool for market trends. It could analyze market trends and generate insights to warn users about downturns based on historical and live data feed, thus helping users invest more effectively. Pretty sweet. Ethical and safety considerations, but of course, as Spider-Man says, with great power comes great responsibility. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. And of course, as OpenAI improves its product, the risk of misuse also increases. The model is expected to have such advanced capabilities that if it ends up with the wrong person, it can be used for harmful purposes. As AI is advancing, this has been a concern of the whole community, which is why at this time, it's crucial for AI companies to engage in transparent practices and prioritize safety and ethics. For this reason, OpenAI and some other AI companies are called to partner up with the ethics board to ensure that their systems do not infringe upon any privacy rights. An offer OpenAI has accepted as a step towards upholding its ethical standards. This is pretty great considering it ensures that the AI landscape doesn't only focus on innovation, but rather responsible innovation. Other than partnering with the ethics board, OpenAI is also taking steps on its own to ensure safety of its models through different practices, including but not limited to stricter model access controls. In this day and age where there are thousands of global discussions about AI, its regulation is also a common topic. There has been growing concern regarding AI technologies to prioritize user privacy, data security, and overall ethical standards. For this reason, the OpenAI team has the challenge of not just making the most useful product, but also making sure it is safe and secure. No wonder the release date keeps getting delayed, but that's not all. If we're talking about ethical implications, synthetic data generation also poses some ethical risks. We already talked about how synthetic data can lead to feedback loops that end up amplifying any AI errors or hallucinations. It is the ethical responsibility of OpenAI as a company to ensure their users don't get any wrong data, which is why synthetic data generation is still under review with the team. Let's see how they try to perfect this, technically and ethically public reaction to Orion. During all these happenings within OpenAI, there has also been a lot going on within the public community regarding Orion. The introduction of Orion, of course, marks an advancement in the AI world, but the public opinion is pretty mixed for two reasons. One, the fact that it was so overhyped at first, I mean, they were telling us it's gonna be a hundred times better than GPT-4, its predecessor, and then it was revealed that the leap forward compared to previous versions was just not very exciting. And two, the fact that, like every open AI model, this one also keeps getting delayed. At this point, the community is wondering if it's even a new and better model, or if it's simply an extension of GPT-4. GPT-4.5, if you will. At this point, the fact that OpenAI keeps hyping up their new models, then delaying it, has completely changed how the community perceives the company and Sam Altman in general. I mean, you know things are bad when a user says that anything the company's CEO has no credibility, right? And to make matters worse, it has been announced by OpenAI that Orion will be released to big companies first, which of course raised some eyebrows in the community, like this one user on Reddit. And the first testing results of Orion have also made people so disheartened that some of the public is now convinced that there is no way a new breakthrough in AI can be done by simply scaling, which might be true considering inference is the new era. But despite all the negative reactions, it is a fact that even if OpenAI manages to make some minimal improvements in the Orion model with their new strategies, it means a huge step has been taken in AI development and refinement. What side are you on? Excited for Orion or disappointed for the overhype and delay? Let's engage in the comments. So, at the end, what do you think? Is Orion actually going to live up to its hype? Or is its performance leap over GPT-4 still not going to be too impressive? Let's discuss in the comments down below. In my opinion, either way, the launch of Orion is going to be the next big thing in the LLM world. So, are you ready for the new update? Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to never miss on another update of AI coming up next.